Hi everyone, in this video I want to start going over the I Pet Goat movie and I just want to give my interpretation and analysis of it based on the Bible and everything that I've come to understand over the years, especially over the past couple of years that, that I've been making videos. And I was recently led to watch it after watching this video over here by Jonathan Kleck. And the reason I want to explain it is because I've actually understood what this imagery over here represents for, for quite some time. It's basically the sixth seal in Revelation 6.14 where it says the heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up and every mountain and island were removed from its place. And this is actually a parallel scripture to Isaiah 34. Four. In fact, I believe I was looking into Isaiah 34 when, when I discovered this, but in Isaiah 34 it reads, All the stars in the sky will fade away, the sky will roll up like a scroll, and its stars will wither like a leaf withers and, a, and falls from a vine or a fig tree and falls from a tree. And it was when I was looking into this scripture and trying to understand the imagery that I came across this image and that's when I understood what this part of it represents but there's actually a lot more to it than that that I want to try to explain and the other thing that I've been wanting to explain is how a lot of these commercials and imagery that Satan uses that Jonathan Kleck has been exposing about Satan's kingdom such as this one over here that I made a video about but I have a lot more that, that I want to talk about and explain this actually ties in to what I'm going to share today as I go over the I Pet Goat movie providing I get through it today it may take more than a day to go over everything but what I wanted to explain is how this is all a copy that everything Satan does is just an imitation of what God is planning to do and so that's what I wanted to try to explain but first I think I need to explain how I understood what the the bow represents I had made a, a video about the bow this is a commercial about strongbow beer and so I'm not going to show all of that again you can watch the video but I want to explain how how I understood what the bow represents. Okay, the reason I want to explain this is because in Revelation 10, 7, it says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants and prophets. So, based on my understanding of this scripture, I believe God is saying that the mystery needs to be understood here in Revelation 10, 7, which as I've mentioned before, I believe this represents the year 2017. And a lot of what I'm gonna share, I understood before the end of 2017. I've just been understanding more and more details about it and it's becoming clear, but I basically had an understanding of what I'm gonna share at the end of 2017. I've just been trying to work up to explaining it and then it, it ties in with what comes up next in Revelation 10 which ties in with this imagery in the I Pet Goat movie as well. Okay, and this all goes back to the Tree of Life and what the Tree of Life represents as well as the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil, how there's two trees, which I've made videos about, and then I showed the, the video by Eric Ludy, which is basically a summary of that as well, how the Bible is a story about two trees. And I just wanted to make a correction, I had said that I thought these were 17 fruits of the Spirit, but it's actually nine fruits of the Spirit, which is interesting because there's there's always a good and an evil because there's six things that God hates 
yay seven are an abomination but there's there's six things that god hates and it's interesting that this comes up in proverbs 16 through 19 so you have the six and the nine which is right side up and upside down so there's nine fruits of the spirit six things that god hates which are named over here and then you have the number 17 which means good it's the gematria for good when god said that he saw the light that it was good and he divided the light from the darkness the word good is the word tav in the hebrew and the gematria for that is 17 17 is also a number that adds up to 153 when you add up all the, the numbers together leading up to the number 17 it equals 153 which is the represents a church it's the net being full of fish but then in contrast you have 17 works of the flesh so if you count all these works of the flesh there's 17 so there's always a true and a false a, a good and an evil okay so i've made videos about what these two trees represent i've explained how the trees are actually two people okay so the tree of life represents jesus and the tree of knowledge of good and evil is a representation of satan and i've also talked about how it's a representation of the the dna I've talked about how the trees represent DNA, but I've also talked about how they also represent where the, the DNA comes from. Another thing that I've been wanting to talk about is how the entire Bible is a representation of DNA. I've explained how there's two testaments. I've also explained how God's name is a representation of DNA, how it's made up of two parts, and how it's almost symmetrical, but it actually comes from this word over here, which is symmetrical. So you can see here, it's another form of God's name. It means to exist, which is what Yahweh means, the tetragrammaton, or Yehovah, it also means the, the existing one. So it's a form of the same name, but this is broken up into two parts, just like the word Abba is, is symmetrical. So I believe even God's name is a representation of DNA, but I believe the entire Bible is a representation of DNA. It's actually a representation of the, the tree of life. That's why I was looking for images of the, the tree of life and the Bible that's actually how I came up with these images because the Bible itself is a representation of the tree of life it's the Word of God but it's made up of two testaments and if you were to to roll up the entire Bible into a scroll you, it would look like this I just put in the word Bible in the Greek just to get a, a visual representation of what the entire Bible would look like rolled up into two testaments. So you would have a scroll and, and within the scroll you would have the two testaments. Okay, as you see in this image over here, this was coming up in Jeremiah um, 17, 13, where it says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you shall be ashamed. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. And so this image came up over here. But you also have a representation of the, the letter Shin, which is what Jerusalem, it's the name that God has engraved in the the city Jerusalem okay and I'll just show you that over here as you can see the letter Shin is created by the the valleys that make up the topography of Jerusalem and then within that you have the the city of David the temple of God you have Ophel, which I could explain the, the meaning of Ophel a little bit later, but you can see it within the topography of 
Jerusalem, you have the, the letter Shin. Okay, here's an article that talks about how Jerusalem is a place where God's name is written and that it looks like the letter Shin in the Hebrew, which is the first letter of Shaddai in Hebrew, which means God. And this is showing a map of the area. And over here it says, this is what's exciting to me. This is a place where God literally chose to write his name. The valleys here form the first letter of Shaddai. And so you can see an image of it here, how God's name is written in Jerusalem. And so this is a representation of God's name. You also have a representation of God's name in Revelation 19, 16, where it says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. So we're told God's name in the New Testament is King of kings and Lord of lords, and it's written on his thigh. If you look at the word thigh in the New Testament, it's Strong's number 3382. And you can see that it means thigh over here, but it's saying it comes from, in the Septuagint, it comes from this Hebrew word over here. So if you look at this word, you see that it's the Strong's number 3409 in the Hebrew. It's a word that means thigh, loins. Okay, this is the Blue Letter Bible. You can get a little bit of better definition here. It says loins as the seat of procreative power, euphemistically the generative parts. But it also refers to it says over here that part of the holy candlestick in which the shaft divided into three branches. Okay, you can see that over here in Exodus 37:17. It says, And he made the candlestick of pure gold of beaten work. When he made the candlestick, his shaft and his branch, his boughs and his knobs and his flowers were the same and six branches going out of the sides thereof three branches of the candlestick out of one side thereof and three branches of the candlestick on the other side thereof so this is describing the menorah that's created which represents the church the seven candlesticks okay so this goes back to isaiah 11 2 which is actually the word Giza. You can see that in verse 1. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the word for the stem was the word Giza. And so you see it means a trunk or the stalk of a tree. And so you have the tree that was cut down the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. And I'll show you another illustration of that. But you see that it was cut down after the fall, and then out of the roots will come a shoot, which, which is Jesus. Jesus is represented by the branch that grows out of the roots, or the shoot that comes out in verse 1. And can I'll just show you an illustration of that can see this one. You also have another illustration here of what that would look like. Actually, a better illustration would be this right here. This is actually what they use for tombstones in, in Israel or, or the Jewish people. They use the tree of life as a, a tombstone. And so out of the tree that was felled or cut down will grow a branch or a shoot which represents Jesus and then the next verse after that talks about the the seven spirits of the Lord which form a menorah and so the the menorah represents the the church 
that comes from that one seed that springs out of the, the tree that was felled. And you see a representation of the seven spirits in Revelation 4, 5 as well. And then it mentions the crystal in verse 6, which makes the number 46. But I'm about out of time, so I'll have to continue in the next video.